Hello and welcome to the channel. Uh, today we're going to be talking about URI dialing. Now when it comes to URI dialing, there's actually not a lot to do on the CUCM configuration side of things. It's actually quite simple, but that's not all there is to it. Uh, you could get very different results depending on where and how you configure it in the CUCM. So we're going to get started today by first talking about some of the things that you need to consider when setting up your URIs. Even though we can use both URIs and directory numbers to reach a destination, they're very different in that directory numbers are assigned to endpoints, uh, phones, video phones, uh, DX80 for example, or uh, WebEx RoomKit, or they can be assigned to applications like voicemail, auto attendant, and so forth. However, directory URIs are assigned to directory numbers. They're not assigned to endpoints, a very important distinction to keep in mind. And in fact, URIs can not only be assigned to directory numbers, they can also be assigned to users. And we'll talk more about that a little bit later. Okay, so a URI points to a directory number or a user, but not a phone. A directory number points to a phone. So although you can't assign a URI to a phone, the CUCM could in fact route calls to a phone using a directory URI if the URI points to a directory number, which in turn points to a phone. Hopefully that makes sense. Now, a directory URI consists of a case-sensitive user portion, which is everything before the at symbol, and a case-insensitive host portion, which is everything after the at symbol. And here's a little tip if you ever find yourself needing to read through the documentation. In a typical URI, the host refers to the characters before the at symbol. However, for a URI in the CUCM, the host portion is what comes after the at symbol. But don't get confused by this. This is just terminology. When it comes down to it, uh, Thor at dcloud.cisco.com is going to be the same regardless of whether we're talking about a, a typical URI or a CUCM URI. Just kind of put that on your radar, though, that there might be a difference in terminology referring to the host portion of the URI, you know, whenever you're reading through the documentation. Okay, so let's talk about how URIs are formatted. A URI can take the form of user at domain, for example, uh, thor at cisco.com, or user at IP address, for example, thor at 10.10.10.1. Now the user portion of a directory URI, that's the portion before the at symbol, it can have uh, A through Z, upper and lower case, numbers, the dollar sign, and a host of other symbols, as you can see here. The user portion is case sensitive. Now that's a default setting in the CCM. However, you can go in to the uh, enterprise parameters and change this. I'll show you that in just a second. Okay, so the host portion, this is the portion of the URI that comes after the at symbol. As you can see in the example above, the host portion can be in the form of an IP address or a fully qualified domain. You can use A through Z, upper and lower case, numbers, hyphens, and dots. However, the host portion cannot start or end with a hyphen. You can't have two dots in a row, and you need a minimum of two characters. And of course, the host portion is not case sensitive. So again, the user part of the URI, the part before the at symbol, uh, is case sensitive by default, but we can change this under the enterprise parameters. Uh, in fact, let's go ahead and look at that now. Let's go to System, Enterprise Parameters, and then right here under Enterprise Parameters Configuration, we can see the URI lookup policy. So actually right now it's set to case insensitive. That's how it was set up in dCloud, but the default setting is actually case sensitive. Okay, one more thing. Let's come down here a little bit further and under cluster-wide domain configuration here, there's a setting for organization top-level domain. Now, this refers to the format that's used with URI dialing. So, for example, you can dial a URI using the fully qualified URI format. For example, you could dial peter at dcloud.cisco.com or you can dial a non-fully qualified URI, which is just the user part, for example, just Peter. But you can do this only if the organization top-level domain here is configured, and in this case, it is. So in this case, the CUCM would just append at dcloud.cisco.com. 
Okay, so let's configure a URI. Uh, remember earlier I said that URIs point to directory numbers or end users, and we can configure URIs in either place in the CUCM. So let's start with uh, configuring one uh, with the end user. Let's go to user management, end user. We'll click find. And we're going to select this user I set up already, P. Parker. Now, for time's sake, I've already set up a phone, uh, gave it a number, and made P. Parker an end user, and then associated him with the phone. And, and that's a necessary part of this. Uh, of course, you can't skip that. But since I've already covered it in another video, uh, and it's a bit time consuming, I, I went ahead and did it in advance. But if you want to know how to do this, uh, if you're curious about this process, just look in the upper right hand corner for a link. Uh, or I'll put it down in the description as well. And I also did this for a user named David Banner, which uh, we're going to use uh, in just a minute to call P. Parker's uh, URI. Okay, so we've selected our user. Then we're going to come down here to directory URI, and we'll type in P. Parker at dcloud.cisco.com and click Save. And we're all set. Really simple, right? But one really important thing to realize is that if you configure a URI under the end user, as we just did, you will not have any control as to what partition the URI belongs to. It will automatically be set up under a partition called directory URI, which I'll show you in just a second, and you're not going to be able to change it. On the other hand, if you associate the URI with a line under the phone configuration, you can select the partition it belongs to, just as you would any other line. So let's see how that works. Let's go over to device, phone, click find, and we'll select our phone. In this case, it's 9971 top. We'll click line one here. Then we'll scroll down to the directory URI section. Now, before we create a new URI for our directory number, I just want to show you real quick that here we can also see the URI that we just configured and associated with the end user. And notice that the partition listed is directory URI. And if I go over here, I can't change it. It's, it's pretty much set in stone. Now, I haven't talked about partitions and calling search space yet uh, because that can be a really long and involved discussion. And I don't really want to get sidetracked here. But let me just say that there is a way around this, sort of. Uh, but it involves setting up an alias to this directory URI partition under the enterprise parameters. Again, that's probably best left for a future video. Uh, eventually, I will make a video that covers all these details. But for now, let's just create a new URI and associate it with a directory number. So this time, let's say uh, peter at dcloud.cisco.com. And we'll click Save. And come back down here. OK, so right now we have our new URI, and it's in the None Partition. And we can change this to whatever we want. In fact, uh, in a real environment, we definitely would not want to leave it in the None Partition. But uh, for the purposes of this video, we can just sort of leave it there and move on. OK, now you might be wondering, you know, how in the world do you dial a URI? Because on a phone, it's just numbers and the star and the pound sign. The easiest way is with a Jabber client because you can just, you know, type it in on the keyboard. But if you're on a regular IP phone, it's not so easy. So to get around this, what you should do is just configure a speed dial button. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go back and select our other phone for David Banner. Uh, we'll go device, phone. And we'll choose 9971 middle to go to the device configuration page for David Banner's phone. And for button number three, we're going to configure a speed dial to call the URI that we just configured for Peter Parker. So let's select add a new SD on button three. And in the number field, we'll put the URI, which was peter at dcloud.cisco.com. Then we'll do the same for label. We'll click Save and Close. And there's our speed dial. 
Okay, so to demonstrate this, I'm going to come over here to our 9971 middle phone. And as you can see here, I've got Peter Parker's URI configured for button number three. I'll call it by simply pressing the button. And there you have it. Okay, that's URI dialing. We'll definitely take a deeper dive in the future because there's a lot more to it than that. But hopefully this is enough to get you started. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.